Well, uh, the reason for the question for me was to take it out of some mysterious unconscious. I think it's the same process uh, in the development of psychology from Freud to Bern to take, uh, to, to, to name and to bring the unconscious material to the surface and not to, to hold it in a so-called it. Never ask the question, what, what is really, what is uh, culture psychological in our, in our brain? Is it just a, a thought? system we identify with and that has a lot of consequences but what is the the base psychologically in us that we for example uh, what is the in organ organization of, of culture or why do you call it psychological because in the mind in in our minds yeah this, yeah in our organization of it yeah but that is only one question, I this think, is, for the whole. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. mm -hmm. I mean, there's an evolutionary psychology answer, isn't there? Yeah. That we are groups, animals, yeah. and we yeah. have yeah. signifiers of the group. Yeah. And our signifiers yeah. of the group we belong to yeah. define yeah. other groups yeah. out there, yeah. and our group, which is about safety yeah. and protection, yeah. and culture becomes yeah. part of the signifiers yeah. of the group. Yeah. The shared science. The shared. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. okay. Yes. 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 yes, yes. Yeah. yeah. So that that's one response, I suppose, to the psychological question of the evolutionary psychology response of what culture is to the mind, the the way we do it. I guess. Um, a classical burn way, or Carlo Moiser especially, would be thinking about belonging and the idea of belonging. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure there's lots of other ways of thinking about the psychological base. I, um, I understand yeah, the, the, the question and, and, and I see the point that, that to get out of this, this uh, mystic thing, as you said, However, I see the, the, uh, the approach to culture from a completely different point of view because I never ever consciously chose the culture where I was born. So it, it, it was around me, it, I was um, learning all my, 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 my life in it without knowing that it is a culture. So for me the psychological base comes um, um, evident when I start identifying, saying that, well, this is a culture, actually. But I'm so deep in, in it first, and that it has, that has to be acknowledged. And, and the, the path that I take as a person to identify certain things that I do as part of the culture and not part of as, a, as an individual or as, as part of, of everyone else's way of behaving. So I very fast from this, the, the mindset come to the actual uh, behavior where we can see the culture. Because otherwise, when we are just all here um, in this room and we don't interact with each other and, and uh, we don't say anything, there is something of the culture that comes, of course, in the mimic and in, in, the, in the gestures. But it's, it's in the behavior that we can see quite a lot of things. And in conversations when we can see um, what the mental construction of the culture is. So I think it's so important to, to acknowledge the fact that we are 
part of the culture without having made a conscious choice in the beginning. I have made a conscious, conscious choice at a certain moment to adopt the TA culture as the, the group culture, uh, the, the, the training culture, the, the, my, my communication culture, my, my um, interaction with other people, and also as part of the, the, my w world view and view of people. But that is a con conscious thing. So there is there are two different things that we need to separate about the psychological base too. Is that the culture? <laughs> <laughs> what the New Zealanders would call the talking stick. Uh -huh. I'm struggling. I'm struggling. Because sometimes and I'm struggling with the thought, why does it come or how does it come? Sometimes I don't want to belong to a culture or to Switzerland, for example, because they do the behavior is different from what I would like to be or what, what, what I would like to do. So I'm struggling with this um, identifying with a culture or not identifying with. It's like a, well, a script. I just don't want to be like my mother. So I'm going into the uh, um, anti-script. So I'm struggling with this. I don't have an answer, but uh, it's just a question. Uh, according to how I defined culture yesterday, that is a set of conscious and unconscious of habitual and creative ways of co-constructing reality. I think the psychological basis that we, we just got used to many things, as you say it, for example. And the fish doesn't know he is, it is in, in the water unless once it's taken out, this is something different and it starts to uh, uh, explore uh, that there must be something like water. Um, I find it important not to talk about the culture of something. It's in, if you have a systemic approach, at, for each question you have to ask yourself, what is the system I'm looking at? What is the part of a larger system I'm looking at? And when I want to describe culture, I, culture of this selected part, then I try to, to find uh, words to describe the conscious and unconscious ways to, to constantly recreate their, their reality. And these have habitual parts. Most of the time, it's the biggest part of it. And they have conscious and creative parts, and that's what we usually want uh, uh, to develop, that they have a chance to change their habits if they are not uh, uh, useful. Or, or not according to our um, values. Uh, I look, it's not only psychological in the way individuals are organized to maintain culture. I think as uh, to, talk, to, to, to uh, state it in uh, TA words, without knowing, we give each other thousands of stimuli to maintain our shared culture, also we don't know that it is that way, and also we could not name it. And this is why it is so difficult if you change, to change the culture, because you get 90-90% the old stimuli, and, you, and individual training needs a lot of uh, autonomy to maintain a different culture, also you still are getting different, uh, the old stimuli. And to do something to invite others into a nasal system of stimulation. And this is why changing cultures uh, should be done within the systems that 
gives each other the stimuli so that they have a better chance later on, uh, even if they cannot name what they learn, but they somehow develop new habits to give each other stimuli and the chances are much better. Well, I, I'd like to connect to you, you both then uh, on a systemic level and on the individual level. Uh, you, you said before, cal there is, uh, I, I make it very simple in your statement, culture is there and you, you, you don't change it. Uh, for me as a German, uh, we, we had uh, severe culture changes in, in history, so we, we, but we were forced to do that in several parts. So the individual, how I identify or the certain, let's say, crazy culture, Some, sometimes cultures are very crazy and therefore I, I think the, the question is important, how do we uh, construct this thought system, this, cr I, I say crazy systems, uh, they don't make any sense unless they are stabilizing some power or, or something else. But there, I think there is a change and we Germans we had the experience that, that we were changed by, by the British and the American after the Second World War. We, we had to change our culture. We had to, to become really democratic so to say. So there, there is a change and uh, through the, the major change also I hope the individuals uh, can, can change. So there, there is a change and also it is a connection between the system and the, the, uh, the individual. But maybe it comes through the system to the exactly. individual. Exactly. I mean that was the one model I was saying yesterday about, that was the model I was saying yesterday about pressure. With pressure the culture changes. That's very different from the consultant going in to change a system. The pressure on Germany from those exterior forces. And I, I guess um, Hazel talking about Saudi Arabia, there has been huge pressure for change for the Middle East. Um, it's slow and the pressure has been fairly gentle which is different from very strong pressure. But then we can also see systems where there has been massive pressure and no change. Syria at the moment, Iran, Iraq, Afghanistan. So I don't know about that. But I, I think um, I absolutely take that point. I think that's the group behavior, these thousands of signals that we give to maintain a culture which once upon a time must have been served as security and protection for the particular group, whatever. It, but this is thousands of years ago and not necessarily of service to us in the 21st century. The more I travel, just thinking about these national ethnic cultures rather than smaller systems, uh, when I travel, what I do is I realize more about my own culture. Yeah, that seems to me to be the only point of traveling, is to realize more about your own culture and its subtlety and its complexity and how it's right through, it's not just skin deep, it's through every organ in me is the culture. I mean, literally every organ, you think of things like food, you know, actually impact the organs. And what I'm curious about is the meeting of cultures, across cultures. How far can we actually get? I think about systems and the way systems unconsciously choose staff who fit the, the organization that this I've seen happen again and again and again. Despite the pressure of policies for equal opportunity, for example, that nonetheless most organizations choose people who will give the right signals that fit the culture rather than challenge the culture. And I see this as a fascinating process, particularly as it's legislated for in most of Europe <laughs> with equal opportunities and so on.
quale in, questo, in questa multiculturalità quali possono essere i punti che ci accomunano come essere umani? I was thinking in this multiculturality, in this multicultural world, what are the points that uh, we have in common as human beings? Quindi eh, andando a, alla radice, quali sono? Che cosa possiamo recuperare come esseri umani per aiutare a so what are the points that we have in common as human beings that uh, integrate I'm saying this I'm saying this because I was quite struck from uh, what uh, the lady that was interviewed who, uh, who goes to, um, yes, to, to Saudi Arabia and her definition of culture struck me and that is feeling, the fact that fe you feel the culture. So how can we go beyond thought, past thought? How can we go beyond? And, and turn the feeling of the culture, for instance, into a resource. I don't know if this is clear. Um, I would like not to go into polarities so that it's pressure that changes culture or it's not all culture. Uh, certainly culture is cho choosing unconsciously what is fitting habits, but it's also choosing unconsciously what is uh, bringing new aspects into it because there's also an intuition of the need of change. And so there's always a question of balance. And certainly if the uh, irritation to the culture is too high or it's not made uh, in a didactic way that they can relate to it, then they will refuse it. Uh, and our job is uh, to define a, a useful amount of irritation that is fitting their intuitions of what could we, what could we need to develop. And, as well somehow be matching their traditions that they think this could, could be ours and we could turn there. And we have something in the background that is not the foreground culture that we can put in the foreground and put something in the foreground in the background. So maybe we Germans, uh, we didn't, it's, it's not new how we are now. This is German culture has been for centuries, but it, it went into the background. And now we are organizing to put it into the background. And also we need a pressure from outside for that. That we developed it in an in a accepted way has to do with many soft factor and processes that we do not hit our children anymore usually. And all these things, I, when I was a child, I was hit. And my mother told the teacher, if he is not obeying, hit him. Uh, this is no damage. And it's, it changed, and it did not only change because it's controlled or pressured, it also has changed by becoming a new habit. That, and that we give each other stimuli that this could be the way we should be. I would, would uh, argument uh, for the thoughts and the thinking. I think it's primarily, I, I, I thought about if we were sitting here together and do not talking from the very beginning and just feeling. And I think in every one of us there is a different thing happening. And therefore I, I, I say we have to, uh, my, my position is to, to how to make these things conscious and to bring it into thinking that, and into naming that we have words for it and then we can talk and we have a dialogue about that. As long as we are just on a feeling level or we, we haven't uh, decided it, that's all, that's, that everything is right. 
but we can redecide if we are abroad or somewhere else or we, we marry someone from another culture, we redecide about culture. And I, I think I would like to focus on the changing aspect, not on the aspect what is there in the deep ground and that we cannot change. And I, I'm, I think uh, I'm in favor of uh, how to name cultures and uh, to dialogue about that. So we have to, to have certain rules in that. I, I, I ca cannot name your culture. But uh, I think uh, in a dialogue, everyone uh, has to, to get some impressions about the own culture. That's not a diagnostical thing that others can do. I, you Swiss people are that and that, that is the, the wrong way, but to being together and then find out what is, uh, as I said yesterday, in the main attention of our culture. That is not one point, but uh, I think that is the learning process, to, but it is to make it conscious and to, to bring it into thinking, not only feeling. So, do you think that uh, verbalizing my feelings and uh, uh, I, I conceptual, conceptualizing it will change my feelings? Because yes. the thought is, I have had my feelings all my life. And if we are together without talking, we, 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 we are stuck with our feelings. So verbalizing them, they change. Yes, sure. Uh, it's not only verbalizing, but, but uh, uh, verbalizing is necessary so that you can set up experiences that change your feelings. Mm -hmm. It's not only the intellectualizations only, mm -hmm. but you need intellectualization in order to uh, uh, develop didactic steps to create experiences that have a chance to change. Also to name your somatic markers, for example, or to, to take a Swiss model from Maya Storch, somatic markers, and, but, but the, it's important to, 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 uh, to realize it or to recognize it. So what's the language that you would use to English. Name? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you want to say something? Yeah, I, I would. I would yeah, I, I want you to just say that that we're talking about culture and cultural change, like that would be something inevitable. Um, somebody changing environment and choosing another country, we do it just because of certain reasons. And then we are confronted with some need for change. But we don't choose a thing to change the culture in, in as, as consciously as, 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 as um, uh, I, I had the, the impression that, that, what, that was said in the discussion. So it's, it's, it's more, um, it's as a consequence of, other, of the choices that we have made, that we come up in, we are confronted in situations where we, we just have to adapt you know, one or the other way into the current culture where we are. And then another thing is that there is so much in the culture that needs to be maintained. But I've got the impression that we're now talking about more changing the culture, how it has to be changed, how we have to new, learn new things. But the culture is, at, for me, security and stability at the same time. So, so the, 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 I don't equal culture change and change. I equal culture as something which is evolving all the time. And uh, sometimes the change is very fast and abrupt. It must be. I'm just, uh, I, I, do not, yeah, I do not equal that. I'm, I'm only saying you cannot perform change without the cultural part of the change. Eh, io mi volevo assicurare eh, di aver capito il tuo pensiero. I was, just wanted to make sure if I've understood what you were saying. In your opinion, becoming, becoming aware of one's culture means changing thinking, changing your thought. Becoming aware of culture, does that change your thinking? Is that, is that right? Does it change your thinking? Well, it's, these are two steps in it. 
steps. Being aware is the first step, and then is the decision. Then you have the decision, as uh, you said, uh, whether it is good or. But but from the example we heard about the Arab culture, I said there are crazy cultures and there are dangerous cultures in the world, and therefore I have the change aspect. Well, we Europeans uh, in a lot of countries we, we we don't have the need to to change our culture. Why? But I think there are a lot of parts of the world that have. And I think I have this position because I, I come from this from a country that had to change, fortunately, by others. Yeah. So the external pressures were of critical importance. What other pressures can help change? What other pressures can help change? In companies, uh, you have, uh, I want to separate two levels. One is changes, we change all the time. It's nothing, you need a, a consultant for it. And cultural change and shift in, uh, in culture is just natural and you do it by slowly uh, changing uh, your habits. As a professional, I think about the changes we can do purposely. So that's a different perspective. And uh, maybe, I guess it's uh, your experience as well, a company as well, they are happy with the way they are. They are constructing their reality, they do not are not interested in change, why should they? Usually they are mature to step into a change. Either the, the, the mindsets of the leaders change somehow, or there is the market is changing, or the laws are changing, or whatever is changing, and they have a need to otherwise the discomfort of not changing will, will be too high, and there are many sources for these kind of uh, uh, I would not call it pressure, but necessity. And, and I, uh, I have a, a, um, one of my sentences is the seed of a new cultural development sometimes have to wait long until first uh, the fluke, was that fluke? Yeah, fluke. The, the fluke uh, of, uh, of change is coming from outside and then you have a chance. If every the fluke is not coming, you as a consultant uh, you yes. don't have any chance to change something. I, I, would, I would agree with that. It's the combined, the, the right time for change. And I think also change in systems, thinking about organizational systems. If I look at many change agents out there. There are the re-engineering people who want to change the structures. And there's the behavioral development people who want to change the behaviors through training and so on. And because they don't work in unison, so either it's changing structures or it's changing behaviors, but not changing both strategically and thoughtfully at the same time, we rarely see effective change happening. It has to be both, because one influences the other, that co-construction um, is one influencing the other. And it's fascinating how in organizations, the behavioral change people, and TA is particularly sitting there. People go in, they do training programs, and six months later, everybody's exactly the same. Even if there's the external pressure, I think about race equality or some of these things that have been an attempt to change, and nothing shifts, really, after a small amount of time. So there is something about being very strategic, plus that fluke of sufficient external pressure as well as the internal pressure for change. So, as I said, we uh, now more focus on the citizen role than on the professional role. Uh, 
And to come back to the pressure point, I think, uh, for example, in, uh, in German enterprise or company culture, uh, we have the, uh, the quote for the women now. And it was re without this pressure to contract by political influence a certain percentage of women in the companies, it didn't work. Other things uh, to, there is a, a long discussion uh, in the moment about the, the goal systems of companies. That is also a question of culture. Long time we had this uh, single goal, the shareholder value. It's not only by, by capitalist uh, motives, but also by to have only a single uh, number to, to monitor everything. But to have a differentiated goal system in companies, it is really, it's, it's um, not a question of consultancy, I think, but it's uh, how you, you build up some kinds of pressure. That's not the big pressure, but the market pressure, there is a political, Influence, so to say, technical. Yeah. So. Yeah. So this is the fluke <laughs> for the seeds. Okay. Do we have to look at all the questions or only that first one? Okay. Let the process go. Shall we look at the other questions or not? No. No, 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 no. no. Okay. Uh, and this is why we, we try to build up a professional culture of integrated culture of change. Because with integrated culture of change. Because of what you said, not, not to be split in, into faculties, and each faculty tries to be the most important. And this is why I say we should have all the aspects uh, integrated, also we are specialized, that uh, the leader of a company also have to integrate in order to, to be their partners and not just saying, I tell you how your telephone can work best, the rest is your problem, but I'm the best in telephone, so as an entrepreneur you say, so what? <laughs> Maybe this is not important for, for me. And, and I think uh, if we are at that point where the flu comes, uh, we have a chance that it, it, it's not just habitual, the change, or something that somehow happens, what is good enough. This is a chance to make something better at that point, more, uh, more uh, matching to several levels of optimizations, to several values at a time. And this capacity to combine this is a major goal for our professional culture to develop. Yeah, I would agree with you there. And certainly in my country, we have a major, major problem, which is that organizations don't understand that need for an integrated perspective on change. Indeed, the way they often work, if they perceive some sort of need for change is to bring in a number of different consultancies and to discourage any communication between them and to argue that if they had one consultancy that was integrated, that would dominate the company. And so there's a huge fear. And I was thinking, Lisa Lott, about using the individual manager who's near burnout that person is a manifestation of this split that needs healing at the level of the organization. And for you to be working healing the individual is really valid for the individual, but in a way it also perpetuates the problem in the organization. It depends on which level of the organization this individual is. If he is able to in a position to, to change or to be aware of a need to change, then he can change also the, something in the organization. If he is on a, on a level where he's not in, a, he ha can't influence anything, then sure, 
It's not uh, it. But uh, I guess they, well, I can also only talk about my uh, clients. They underestimate their potency of change or po possible change in the whole organization. Because if they go out and talk about what's the pressure and what's their pressure they perceive, they can change something. That's my belief. Yeah, I think that might be a belief. <laughs> I think that might be a belief. And one of the f things which I have found fascinating as I worked in organizations is that power is much more limited than people realize. I mean, I think if we look at Obama at the moment in the States, we see his hands are tied. We think he's the most powerful man, but actually power is often much more limited. So I would have the opposite perspective of yours, that actually very often even the chief officer has limitations on how much influence and power they have. We have to be prepared to be post-heroic. Uh -huh. Post-heroic. Yeah. <laughs> post-heroic, yeah, exactly. No more Ulysses. Uh -huh. and, and I agree with you partially. Because if this manager, for example, associates with the other colleagues in, on his uh, hierarchy system, they might gain more power and they might be able to change not the whole thing, but something. And this is what we can learn to help them to do. And, and this is why I always said uh, nobody gets coaching from me uh, unless at least 50% of the energy is put on what he can do in his organization role to spread. And if, if they are only interested to get a more comfortable zone for themselves, maybe for some phase to, to get a relief, but then I call for responsibility, and if not, my lifetime is not worthwhile to be invested. Well, to my uh, question from uh, that was fixed there, I, I heard some interesting answers from you, more the archaic answer about the needs. Excuse me, just to interrupt the process, but we are experiencing with the translation in our groups, because we, we have put somebody to translate in each of the groups, that it takes more time than we had anticipated. So I just want to leave 10 more minutes and then we all meet here, okay? So that we can finish the process and everybody has a chance to express themselves. <laughs> you know you're in Qatar with leaders? Well, people are very ambivalent about leaders, I talk in that. Okay, so, so, okay, so you were calling me a dinosaur. Come on. So we we have uh, the needs that that make culture. We have the habits that that uh, make culture, or we are used to, and we we also found uh, examples where changes is possible. Therefore, I I I don't think that it is that deeply rooted as it is mentioned often. And that we are, uh, we we should treat culture as other systems like uh, the script or something else, and not to be uh, somehow fascinated or to see it too deep or too strong, and all this kind of, kind of stuff. And I, I maybe our next generation, who now is in every young people go to Australia, New Zealand, or whatever. <laughs> Uh, that's the fashion today. They they will show us uh, that it is not that deep, but but that gives me gives me hope for that. Yeah, and this this is uh, when you use the DNA uh, metaphor, and this may be true for one for for a kike level, but the modern uh, epigenetic research shows us there is a software on it that can change the results totally, also the hardware of DNA stays the same, and it can be changed with, within, from one generation to the next, also the epigenetic uh, uh, regulations of the system. So we should not have two, two simple models, maybe a multi-level model. And 
that's why I think it's a good metaphor. Yeah. Because there is certain change, mm -hmm. but there is also absolute yeah. not change. Mm -hmm. and, and I like very much the, the thought about the stimuli. The more old stimuli we have, the more we stay in the old uh, culture. And the more we get new stimuli, we, the more we can change. So if people believe that their change is po possible, that are new stimuli. And I, I always want to be careful not to mystify our not having success because we are just not good enough that in a didactic way of building up culture. We have to learn a lot to be good enough, and then maybe some of the myths how stable cultures are dissolve. So we have to, what do we have to do? We have to be much better in a methodical, conceptual, uh, uh, didactic way to, to help to develop culture. Then we might detect that much more change is possible. And, and, uh, and purposely on value-oriented change as possible, then we think sometimes now. There's also always the danger, like you said, that uh, so it is used as an excuse and also the mystification of archaic things can also be used as an excuse. And I think that the over-intellectualization of change and in organizations and, and change, and in, even in discussion, is also mystifying it. Because my first question is when I talk about change with, with people in, in my organization, the first is, well, how does it show when I talk with managers and they need to change? So what do I need to do differently? What do I need to learn? So it's much more concrete than, than even the discussion that we have. So it's, I think that the, some of the bringing up the discussion on the, on the on the very, very cognitive level up there, up, upstairs, it's, it's, it's dis making distance between the change and the dynamism of the, of, of the change. And I think that our, what is important for us is to use the, the energy that is moving already in the organization, see where it's going, and perhaps push it a bit to one direction which we think with our own approach that that might be useful but we don't master it anyway so it's it's not in our hands we can only accompany the 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 things that are going on and some changes are going backwards some things that are uh, that are happening in the organization they're going backwards so the change equal good should be uh, forgotten change can be very very bad so I, I, I sometimes introduced in the Bernian model of the levels of discounting a, a, a fifth level. The first is the existence of the problem, then there is the signif significance of the problem, then the general solvability, and then there comes often in organization the sentence, in our house this is not possible, or this is possible in our organization, this is possible, and I call that the systemic solvability. Yeah, and also you ha between the general and the personal, and if uh, you believe that there is on a, that in our house this is not possible, or this is, uh, then you are excused, for example, to, to be have a personal solvability. So that is a, a very concrete point to identify what is uh, possible in an, let me just finish it, what is possible in a certain system and how it is discounted and we can intervene at, at this point uh, to make it clear. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, all that that throws up is that we are attempting to solve the wrong problem at the wrong time. So when, you, when we get to the organizational solvability or the systemic solvability, it takes us back to another stimulus, the existence of another stimulus, which we had not noticed. And we have to track that one through first of what's its significance and solvability. So, I mean, this is a, a good way, I think, that structure um, is an excellent way, the discounting structure, or accounting, we call it, not discounting, accounting, to really um, try and focus on what is the real issues, 
that need to be worked with, not often the presenting issues. But yeah, we, we have the same. There is a name of a book. I haven't finished the book, and I probably will never. But the, the name is so attractive, and I think that it's so so useful. Um, the way you talk can change the way you work. Is the title of the book. The way you talk can change the way you work, or changes the way you work. And I think that that's that's the the the, the kind of discourse we have in the organisations that actually can on individual and, and group level uh, uh, reinforce the, the change and I I'm, I'm probably I trust people, I trust, trust um, the, the, the good part of people so that, that if we will allow the, the energy go where it is going it will eventually be for the good if the values are right. I agree with you, and I'm a bit skeptical about um, that's the old idea of freeing up good energies, and then they will find their ways. I don't, so I, we always should draw lines where it, where it could go, knowing we are not in control. Um, concerning the language, it's important. I want to comment that we are now talking as as program programmatic people. If we work with a company, we do not use the word culture. We just help them to experience better, ex uh, uh, better examples. We think about that in building up culture, but we, do, we, are not, uh, we, we do not use our professional language and do not impose it to the company. I'm intrigued by that because in my country, organizations are saying we want to change our culture. Cultural change is the current theme of the times. So <laughs> that's their language. What do they mean? They mean something about the morale, the atmosphere, the intentionality of, of people in the system, the inadequacies, they often mean doing more with less resources. I mean, many things get wrapped up into changing the culture. Do you react on that when, when they come offer you this kind of oh. world? Oh, Let, let's, let's get real and actually get what is it that yeah. you're... Sounds. Yeah, yeah, what is it you're wanting to change? But I was thinking also about language is, is part of that many, many stimuli. Language, the way we say it, not just what we say is key, and it's key to those people under 30 you were talking about in the sort of global culture. But they are all middle class, they have parents who are financially supporting them, they are well educated from the Western countries or westernized countries of the world. This sort of idealized, perhaps, generation of the future, the people who are young now, in the digital age, which, you know, my daughter's one of them, you have children that are part of it. If it wasn't for nice middle-class Western mum or dad, they wouldn't be swanning around the world doing whatever they're doing. And who knows what they're gonna become? I'm fascinated. But I'm not sure this is a, a global group. I think it's a social class. I think it's a westernized social class. Between the classes are sometimes higher than between the nations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but in this case, I, I think about elites. Yeah. I I'm, I'm, I'm come from a left-wing uh, political uh, uh, background. <laughs> to talk about elites, it's not the, the favorite thing. But eliten about elites and I think maybe it doesn't uh, need to have everyone in it but uh, what are the major culture making groups in the in a country or in the world and I think this kind of dialogue that is and people n know other parts of the world that that ch really changes there are other experiences as uh, Hazel said uh, uh, even with young people, and I, I think, but I, do, I don't idealize that. I, I don't know how it how it comes. Maybe they 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 haven't suffered from 
other things we have heard the the stories from the poor people we, we haven't uh, uh, had that in our life I, I think but we heard the stories and uh, now now generations they maybe they haven't heard the stories uh, uh, about what being poor and uh, yeah and uh, what what how do they do with it this archaic uh, survival uh, motive is behind the culture or this this belonging uh, if you are a member of a tribe you are, and you are, if you are excluded of the tribe then then you you have to have to to die that was and i think that is a deep collective unconscious piece in us uh, but it's not uh, not necessary today it's uh, we have to say goodbye to this yeah? a lot of people are living this style yeah and uh, but we have to, uh, we, we we can change that okay. uh, i i I, f I find looking at the young is, is a very interesting phenomena. I mean, if I think about that elite, they all meet each other. They don't have experiences of the country they're in and the culture they're in like Hazel does. They meet each other and they go clubbing and that's, that's what their life is, is about. But there is another group of young people who are meeting all over the world, mostly young men, disenfranchised, mostly Muslim men who are meeting and these are forming some of the terrorist cells that we're we're seeing around the world and when they come f again from all our countries not just from the fundamentalist countries and they are a group that for some reason doesn't feel part of the culture in or cultures in which they are brought up and that's hugely significant in terms of their impact and their potential impact for all of us I'm fascinated. We have so many young British men who've gone off to Somalia or wherever to train as terrorists. So this is a bit of maybe of a hijack out, but it's a cultural phenomenon. It's a system. It's impenetrable, seemingly. I, I uh, said to you that uh, you were working with the example in the, but was, was I mentioned yesterday, there is this aspect of uh, I have to name the culture or the, the, the norms uh, which I'm oriented with. So it's a discussion. You, you, you say you don't name it. And you said uh, the, the question in uh, Britain is that they ask us to, to change culture. What is, but we have to make open our norm system, our values. <coughs> I name it on a different level. I do not say we have an idea what a, what a good organizational culture is, but on a meta level we say uh, 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 interdepartmental dialogue of some of quality helps them to discuss their culture. So on a meta level we name it as a culture of dealing with culture. On a content level we don't name it because there are so many possible cultures uh, and it's a question of didactic, whether you give them a schema, uh, they should think in, or you just uh, organize a process of dialoguing and they find their own, own narratives that might be closer to their intuitive processes. And this is uh, uh, because we don't know which content categories are the right categories, we don't use them, and also not uh, uh, not uh, to to take people's communication in a frame that is not really fitting them. But on a, on a meta level, on the didactic, how to deal with cultural uh, questions, we have ideas and, and principles like crystallization, experimental design, uh, parallel transfer, not to organize processes that you always need an external consultant, uh, that you work with resources in a way that you cannot only go for 100 meters, but you, you have still resources to reach really a goal, and all these, and we can name these, but not in a content level. But this is systemic content. Yeah, more yeah. dialogue on is a, better a, than less. Yeah, on a different, on, a, on another level, it's certainly content. Yes, but it's a different type of content.
What is our conclusion? Our, our, our <laughs> thoughts? How do you call thoughts? Our il succo. We have different views. Importanza della condivisione. The importance of sharing. I want to put it in a metaphor. Uh, it's not one spotlight. <laughs>